welcome back team it is your biggest fan the real casadero and in this session we are going to be building a small command line application that is going to give you an introduction to the fundamentals of programming an introduction to the fundamentals of the command line an introduction to the fundamentals of powershell and the introduction to the fundamentals of building your own websites web applications software whatever it is you want to build now i will tell you this here's the caveat team i always start off with html css and javascript because i have come to believe that these three things they are they make it super simple for us to build something right away and see our results and when we're able to do that it motivates us it inspires us and it 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 drives us to move to the next level in our journey, right? So the first part is just, is just start creating. And then as you're creating, you have all these other ideas. Like when I sat down at the computer, I sat down to do something else. And then I was like, yo, I'm doing all this stuff right now. Let me just record a video for the people out there who want to know how to do this same stuff. Maybe I can help somebody out, make their lives easier, make, make, just make things more enjoyable team. So if you want to learn a new skill that is going to help you progress along your coding journey so you can build the things you want to build be able to do the things you want to do so you can live the life you want to live and become the person you want to become hang out with me here team let's get to it here we go all right team it is your biggest fan the real casadero and before we get started what i want to do is i want to give you guys a little bit of context a little while ago, three, four, five days ago, I created a five and a half hour guide to software engineering and web development. And this guide is designed for beginners to to show them all of the stuff that you need to learn and give you a, a thought process and help you develop a mindset that's going to make you a winner when it comes to learning to code, going out, getting a job, starting your own business, building your own apps, all that stuff. But what happened was, is I had a clip of some remote control cars in there and another YouTube channel thought that, I don't know what they thought, but they flagged the video. They, they put a copyright strike on it. YouTube took the video down and they gave my channel one strike, which is fine. It's no big deal, team. Stuff like that happens all the time. You work your entire life. You go out, you get your dream job and then you get fired. And now you're like, ah, oh, what do I do? Right. You build you build a home of your dreams and then lightning strikes it and it burns down. You buy a brand new car and then the engine blows up like this stuff happens to people every day and people are devastated. They're distraught and they should be because they worked so hard to get to where they want to be. And it just feels like things aren't working out. But that is life like stuff happens in life and it is it's crap. I wish I could stop it, but I can't. The best I can do is I can I can show you the things I know and I can try to keep you inspired and motivated and dedicated and sort of push you along the way to get to where you want to be, team. And I understand code and I understand people. And, and this is just what I do, team. So let's roll with it now. If you are not on a Windows 10 machine, if you're using Mac or you're using Linux, that is absolutely OK, because what I'm going to show you here, you can use on any computer system. You can use it on Windows. You can use it on Mac. You can use it on Linux. You can use it on web servers. Listen to me, team. You can use this on web servers. And this is the core of programming. The core of programming is like, hey, right. All we're doing is we're passing information around. And we're we're doing we're performing computations with that information. Every program is the same. It has a it has a, a, a user interface, a input, some processes and then some output team. That is it. So what I show you here, you can make in any programming language. So I'll come back and I'll make different videos and I'll show you how to do this in JavaScript and I'll show you how to do this in Python. And I those are those are the main languages I know, JavaScript, Python. And I know I know a, a, a little bit of PowerShell enough to get around and to get things done now because I understand the core fundamentals. And by the end of this video, because you understand the core fundamentals, you'll be able to go out and you'll be able to say, hey, man, I want to know how to do this thing in Perl or I want to know how to do this thing in C sharp. Or, I want to know how to do this thing in C plus plus. And then you go down that road and you're able to build stuff in different programming languages and you will understand that the language does not matter. The programming language does not matter. All you're trying to do is communicate with the computer. It's just like the English language team. It's just like the English language. You can communicate with me in English, but if you want to communicate with somebody in Spanish, then you have to go learn the Spanish language. 
If you want to communicate with the computer in, in C++, then you have to go learn the C++ language, right? Computers, they're, they're, poly, they're polyglots. They don't speak a lot of languages, but they can understand a lot of languages. But first, we have to give them the, the, the software in order to do that. But in this case, we're going to start out with the software. Two basic tools you need if you're on Mac or Linux. And, um, and then one of those tools, it already comes pre-installed in Windows. So let's do this, team. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my web browser, and I'm going to use Microsoft Edge. And if you're on Windows, feel free to follow along. If you're on Mac or Linux, follow along, because I'm going to show you exactly what you need in order to follow along with this guide right here right now team so right here in the search bar we're going to type power shell core boom and right here first result is a github page now if you didn't get that as the first result check it out github.com forward slash powershell forward slash powershell that's how you get over here team and i know you guys can't see this it's wicked 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 small team i apologize um but that's how you get over here. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down and you just pick your operating system. Go over here to the instructions and the instructions will tell you how to install PowerShell Core in your operating system. And again, what PowerShell Core does is it allows you to use the same commands across multiple computers and operating systems. So you don't have to learn a bunch of new stuff. You don't have to remember a bunch of stuff. But again, in this video, I'm going to give you the fundamentals so you can go and do this in any language you want to any language all right so select your operating system install powershell core and then come back and go grab this thing over here i'm gonna hit Control t and you're gonna type in visual studio code and the url for visual studio code is code.visualstudio.com go in here select your operating system download and install visual studio code and you be you will be ready to follow along team so let's get to it so we're going to hit alt f4 to close out that and we're going to hit the windows key i'm going to type p w s h and as you can see we got powershell right there we'll just run powershell where it is i'm gonna hit the control key and hold that down and i'm gonna scroll up to make this bigger so you guys can see what's going on and now we're inside of powershell now what's going to happen if you're on a different system it isn't going to look exactly like this so if I do a CD and a tilde key, and the tilde key is right underneath your escape key, and we get that tilde by holding shift, hitting the tilde key, and this is how we get this uh, the squiggly thing here. It's called the tilde team. And we hit enter, and this is going to take us to our home directory. In Windows, this means home directory. If you're on another system, this will mean home directory too, if you're using PowerShell, right? So again, you can use the same commands across all systems, and you'll get pretty much the same results like 90 95 percent of the time or something like that but i'm going to go back to my d drive so i'm going to go cd d forward slash the real casadero to put me in the real casadero folder then i'm going to clear all this stuff so we got a fresh screen and we can get started now let's say we want to make a new html project say let's let's just say for instance we want to build a new a new website every day because we want to practice we want to practice we want to get good at this stuff now one way we can do this is we can say, all right, the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need a sandbox. So we're going to do a MKDIR and we're going to call this the sandbox. This is going to make a new directory called the sandbox. And we, the sandbox is where we go to play. It's where we go to do things and experiment. So let's go jump in our sandbox. So we'll do change directory and we'll type in the, and then we'll just hit T and we can tab through all of the, the files in this folder that start with the because those are the only three letters we type when we when we set this thing up, right? So we go boom, right? And it shows us that. But there's nothing else in here. So this is all it shows us when we hit tab multiple times. We can hit enter. Now we're inside of the sandbox folder and it tells us right here, this is where we are. And on your system, it will tell you pretty much the same thing. If you're on Mac or Linux, it'll tell you in a different kind of way, but you should be able to look at this and understand it. All right, team, so we're inside of the sandbox folder. Now let's say we wanna make a basic HTML application. This is what we would do. We would need a few files. We would need an index file. So we would do a new dash item and we go index.html. Then we would need a CSS file to style all this stuff up. So we go style.css and we can name these files anything we want as long as. So check it out. The index.html. This tells the web server that whenever somebody tries to navigate to our root folder, show them this index file. Show them an index of all the stuff we want them to see. Right. That's all that this file right here is doing. This style.css is used to control the look, feel, layout, 
color, whatever of our index.html. And then we want to make a jet, well, we'll make, we'll call it code.js. In this file, what it does, this will be the logic for our program. And we can use this code.js to, to grab and manipulate things from our index.html. We can, we can go into our index.html. We can change styles. We can add styles. We can remove styles. We can remove items. We can add new items. We can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Now, we're not going to get deep into JavaScript in this video. But if you're interested in learning just a little bit more, right, not jumping into the deep end right away, you can check out the code 365 startuplab.com. And there are introductory courses over there, introductory guides that are going to introduce you to HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And if you want to support the channel, by all means, all you got to do is sign up for the paid course on code 365 startup lab. And you have lifetime access to all of the stuff I produce and upload to the code 365 startup lab and you'll have access to additional perks and stuff as i figure out what those are going to be i got some ideas team but check it out if you have some ideas as to how the code 365 startup lab can be super awesome and benefit you leave some comments below and if there's other stuff you want me to talk about if there's other stuff you want to learn leave some comments below team and we will work on building those things for you. And when I say we, I'm not talking about like a team of people that are around me. I'm talking about me and you team. We can do this and we can do it together. All right. So check it out. We want to create these three files, index, style, and code. So we hit enter and boom, it makes these three files. Now we want to organize our code because we don't want to be all over the place. So what we can do is we can do, we can make a couple more directories. We'll do an MK DIR and we'll do a CSS. We'll put a comma in there, CSS, comma, and then we'll put a JS folder. Boom. So now we got these two folders. So we do a DRR. We got all this stuff here. And we want to move this code file into our JS folder. So we'll say move item code.js into CSS. Boom. And now it is gone. If we do a DIR, it has moved. And I moved it into the wrong folder. So if we do a DIR CSS, right, it's in the wrong folder. Now check this out. We can move this from here back to here. Notice what folder we're in, right? We're in our CSS folder, right? Well, we're in our sandbox folder. We looked at the CSS folder, but we know where this code file is. It's in the CSS folder. So we can do a move item CSS code, and then we can move that into JS. Boom. And now that file has been moved from here into here. So if we do a DIR CSS, it's empty. But if we do a DIR JS, it has this code file in it. So let's do a DIR again to see everything that's in this directory. Now we want to move this style.css into this CSS folder. So we'll go move item style.css. We'll move this into the CSS folder. And so when you're when you're dealing with directory paths, what you want to do is you want to use the dot backslash, then the directory name, and then another backslash. That tells PowerShell, hey, we want to work with a particular folder. Now the the way I'm typing this so fast, if I do a DIR again. Let's say I want to look at this folder. I just type dir css c or css and just hit tab. We can do it with just the c. We can type dir c and hit tab, and it will show us everything that starts with the c, and it will actually cycle through the subfolders in that folder too, or the subfiles. So right as you can see, it popped up this style.css. So that's just a way to type stuff real fast and get around real fast. So now we have this sort of we have this basic layout going on here, team. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this directory in Visual Studio Code. And that's super simple. We go code dot. And this command right here says, hey, Windows, hey, Linux, hey, whoever, right? Open up Visual Studio Code and open it to open this directory, this directory that we're in, the current directory. That's what this dot stands for of Sandbox. Open that up in Visual Studio Code, too. So we can see all the files in there. And we can start working. All right, so we'll hit enter here. It's going to open Visual Studio Code. I'm just going to make this full screen team and I'm going to do a control plus to make this a little bigger. Control W to close that uh, that intro window. And if we go right here to index, you can see that this is empty. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some basic HTML and then I'm going to show you how to style it. All right, team. So here we go. And then, you know, actually, we're going to add some JavaScript too, just to just to just to give you a feel for what JavaScript does. Right. And it's not going to be super in-depth. There's going to be some basic stuff to just get you started. 
So we're going to add an exclamation point, and because we're in Visual Studio Code, when we add the exclamation point and we hit tab, it gives us a basic template. At the very top, we're going to have our doc type. This tells the web browser, hey, this is an HTML document. So just know when you're reading this file, Mr. Web Browser, whoever you are, this is an HTML document. The primary language we're going to use here is in English, and inside of this head element is all of the metadata, all, all of the metadata. Right. And so what what goes in this head is just information about the website. So we're saying here, we're saying, hey, browser, we're going to use the character set of UTF-8. And UTF-8 is just uh, the, at its very basic level is just a bunch of codes, like millions of them. And each of these codes correspond with a letter, number or emoji for every language. Well, all, I, I don't know if it's for every language known to man, but all of the most commonly used languages. I mean, there's like. I don't know, it's probably like a million characters in there or something that we can use. All the emojis, the airplane, emo all, all that stuff. That's just telling the browser like, hey, you're going to use this UTF-8 library to, to, to add characters and emojis and stuff that we specify we want inside of our document here. Right here we have the meta name viewport. In this, right, this data, the browser reads this. It goes in here and it says, okay, what's this metadata? All right, we're going to use UTF-8. Okay. Oh, we got a viewport. What's that viewport set to? And right here we're saying set that viewport to the width of the device. And what that means is that the content inside of our page is going to be scaled to the size of our browser window. And we're going to do that at a one to one scale. Now we could go 0.5 and this will make everything smaller. We could go a 0.2. This will make everything bigger. But this right here says make it one to one don't don't what whatever the whatever the programmer has specified for this size to be we are going to we're going to reposition that content and make it smaller or bigger depending on the size of the device that's all that is and then this right here this is just some legacy stuff to deal with uh older versions of internet explorer now right down here we're going to call this we're going we're just going to say the real Casadero because that's who I am and then we'll copy this control C and we'll go down here and we'll do a h2 h2 tab and we're gonna paste that right in there and right here we're gonna put h1 and we're gonna call this our new project bam and we'll hit save now in Visual Studio Code, this is one cool feature of Visual Studio Code. And right now, I'm going to get rid of my face so you can actually see what I'm about to point at. So if we go down here to the bottom of the screen, we got this little icon that says go live. Now, you probably don't have this right now, and you can get it. Super simple. This is another reason why I love Visual Studio Code. If we click over here on these boxes, click those boxes, they will bring up this, this sidebar right here. And right here, we can type something called live server. And... It'll be the first thing that pops up. And if we click that, we get this page and it tells us all about live server and what live server does. And then all we have to do is hit the install. Now I have uninstalled here because I already have it installed, but you'll have installed. So you go install and when it's done, you are going to see this button pop up down here. And what happens is when you click this button, it'll start a local web server and then it'll open your default web browser with your web page in it. And if we drag this off to the side and we go over here, as we edit this page and we change things and we save the file, the web server is going to refresh and show us what the new look and feel is. So, all right, we're over here, team. If we go underneath title, we can type a link. And actually, let me do that again, control Z. So we'll type L-I-N-K. And then we want to link to a CSS document. We want to link to the style sheet that's going to control how our page looks and feels. So we're just going to hit link to CSS and then we'll save that and we'll go over here to our files and we'll go to our style.css and now we can style this page. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab that H1 and so this is saying, hey, select this elements and then inside of these curly brackets, we are going to add some attributes to these elements, right? And these, th this is just going to specify how we want this element to look. So right now we got our H1 and we want the background to be red. So we can go back B A C K G R O N D and we can set that background to red and save. Oh no, what's going on? Something, something is broken team. So let's go back here to our index.html. We got our H1, we got our H2. Mm, and actually I don't even want the H1 to 
background to be red. I want the H2 background to be red. So we'll save that. And something's not right because this should be restyling. Let's try to refresh this page real quick. And this means that I've done something wrong. So let's take a look at our HTML. We got our style.css. So the problem is, is that I didn't specify what folder this is in. So if we do a dash, Visual Studio Code, most of the time, it doesn't do this all the time. It'll show us like there's some instances where maybe like you can't quite parse the code or something or doesn't understand what we wrote. But in this case, it's saying like, hey, man, there's a couple folders that you can look in. So we'll go here and it's saying, hey, there's a file in this folder that you might be interested in using. So we'll click there. We'll hit save. And now we've got this background of red on our H2 element. Now we can go back over here to our style and we can say make our text color white. So we'll make our text color white and we will. Oh, what's going on here, team? Is it doing it again? So there we go. So right here we've made our text color white. And I think the problem was that I had this page selected. And so when I saved uh, the, the server couldn't upload it. So now we've got that white. Let's make this uppercase so we can do a text transform text dash transform uppercase save and now we've got it uppercase but yeah I don't I don't like these I mean this is cool but I don't like these flourishes that we got going on here right so let's get rid of these they're called serif so if we scroll in here a bit right you see like on the T and on the H and all this right so we can you'll see what I'm talking about team so we can do font dash family and hit tab and we'll just go sans and we'll set that to sans serif and now when we save those things go away now let's center this inside of this red element so we can do a text dash align align center and then we will save and now it is centered inside of this red block now team let's see let's see let's see let's add some padding right so we're going to do padding p-a-d-d-i-n-g and we'll go padding top and we'll add uh, five pixels. So we'll go padding top five pixels. Save. Oh no. No, 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 no. Padding. Ah, oh, this is where I messed up. That's how it should look. Padding top. Save. Now we've got some padding at the top. And then let's put some padding at the bottom. So if we hold down Shift and Alt and hit down while we're on this line right here, it will duplicate that line. And then here we can just put VO top padding bottom. Now we got a little space on the bottom team. So we got a pretty decent layout. And then now let's style our H1. So what we'll do is I'm just going to take this and move it down. And we don't have to. We can put this stuff anywhere we want. The deal with CSS is called cascading style sheets. So what happens is the, the styles are applied as this file is read. So let's say, for instance, we did something like this. We came down here and we were like H2. And then we went font size. Uh, 32 pixels all right you see how that font size changed and let's make instead of making it so big let's make it smaller we make it 15 and this page this page is actually zoomed in so this isn't the actual size if i click on this page and i do control zero it'll put it back to the original size i just zoomed in so you guys could see so if i go to the original size i can set this to 32 and it would be big enough save and maybe not big enough so let's set this to 50 50 save all right so team what we're going to do now, so so check it out, right? We're, we're down here, we're able to change the font size. So the cascading style sheet applies all of this CSS and then it gets down here and it goes, oh yeah, right? This is what we want us to be. Now let's say, for instance, we, we put in color and we've made the color blue. It's going to change our text color to blue. Even though we set it up here to white, it made it white and then it saw this and it made it blue. And this is what jacks people up a lot of times in CSS is that you have to really wrap your head around how these styles work and what order you need to put stuff in or else it's going to get super confusing that's one of the things that really messes people up so i would say really think about what it is you're trying to build and the look in the field and then just start working but always but work in increments and change one thing at a time whenever you have a mistake because if you start changing multiple things at once you're going to get confused and, and eventually you're just going to be like yo man i want to start all over and that's a lot of work and a lot of time lost you will you will have learned a bunch of stuff you will be getting smarter as you go through this process but that thing you want to build it will never get built because you keep starting and then starting over starting and then starting over team so just keep that in mind so i'm gonna I'm going to put my cursor on this line right here. We don't have to select the whole thing. The cursor just has to be somewhere on the line. And if we hit control shift K, we can delete that line and then we hit save and it's back to normal. So what we're going to do is we're going to style our H1 right here. So we're just going to do this. We're going to go H1 
And we're going to apply a lot of the stuff we have up here. We want it to be sans serif. We want it to be centered. So we can do that. Control C. We go down here. Control V. Paste those there. S. And now we've got this sans serif font and it's centered. And we've got a. Uh, let's see. How do we do this? Yep. There we go. So this means I'm, I'm just looking at this text and I'm seeing that like these first letters are, are uppercase. And that's because I typed it that way over here. But check this out, team. Check this out. We could go our new project save and everything's lowercase. But we can go back over here into the CSS and we can say, hey, no, we want this to be capitalized so we can go. All right, there we go. So we'll put a new line under here. We'll just hit control enter to make that new line. And actually, I feel like all this stuff over here is just over too far. So we'll grab these two and we'll do a shift tab to. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe it's maybe. I don't know. It just something seems off, right? Like this, these up here are look, they're in one place and these down here, they're in another place. Let's see if we can back these. Up. Maybe I just have these in the wrong place. Let's try this. We'll go over here and just tab those over. All right. So we'll bring this over here. And what, what were we on team? Oh, we, we want to capitalize this so we can do a text dash transform and then we can go capitalize save and now it's going to produce that same effect we had before team now because we got these capitalized like this these lowercase letters i would like to cap i would like to do something like that over here so what we can do team right if we go back here let's add let's add our own class for capitalization so we can do a id actually let's do a class so we'll do dot cap italize and then we have our brackets and what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, increase increase the font size uh, by 0.5 of whatever the, the parent font size is so whatever whatever has this class we're just going to not double it we're going to increase it by by 50 percent so these letters will be a little bigger when we apply this class so we're going to say uh, font size is equal to font dash size is equal to not equal to font size I'm sorry guys 1.5 ems there we go like this and and you see nothing nothing has happened nothing's changed what we're going to do is going to go back into our html and this is kind of a convoluted way to go about this i don't recommend doing doing it like this there's probably better ways to do it you can probably do it programmatically but this is going to introduce you to some stuff that you can use in html and css that's going to help you out in the future team so we, we'll add a span in here so we just put a space and we'll go span and inside of this span we're going to add a class and inside of that class, we are going to put our, this is going to be our class name, capitalize. So if we go back here, we go capitalize V. What we can do is we can take this T and we can put it inside of here. So we'll go control V. Oh, geez. We'll just put T. And then we can do that over and over again. So I'm going to control B to get rid of this sidebar. And then I'm going to go view and toggle word wrap. And what's going to happen is as we, type stuff across the screen if it goes all the way to this margin all the way to the end it'll just automatically wrap so we can read it it doesn't affect our code in any way it's just so we can read what we wrote so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this we're going to take this span we're going to go control c and we're going to paste it right here where this r is v and we're going to do the same thing for where this c is v and let's see so we've got span t and then we've got span Uh, this is going to be R and then over here we'll have span C All right, and I know this looks a little confusing let's see if we can make this look uh, not confusing I guess let's see if we got T so maybe if we do it like this nah I'm just going to leave it team I don't it's just just gonna leave it so right now so check it out right so we got a bigger t a bigger r and a bigger c and that doesn't look right i don't like the way it looks i don't like the way it looks so we're gonna go z and we're gonna get rid of all this stuff but that's how you can use span in order to in order to select specific parts of some text and that's how you do classes so like we could go here and we can add that class of capitalized capitalized to our h2 
and let me go back here and make sure I spelled it right. So we'll just go grab this control C and we'll go back over here. Control V and we'll save. And it is not. Let's go 2.5 to save. And now you can see this doubles, this increases that size. One point, I think 1.5 is what it was already set to because this element is a H2 element. But anyway, team, anyway, uh, and, and when I say that, because it's an H2 element, so the standard size, like if we go down here, we put a paragraph and we put, uh, let's just add some bum text. So we'll go lorem and then we'll add, uh, let's just add 30 words. So we go lorem, lorem 30. And this is just, this is just filler text. It's just placeholder text. So if we, if we add a class to this P of, of capitalized, so we'll go class equals capitalize save it becomes bigger and it's about the same size as this which means that the h2 the browser styles the h2 at this size and we can reset all this stuff to default if we want but we're not going to dig we're not going to dig into that right now team we'll just leave it like it is but we are going to remove this capitalized class just so we have our paragraph set a certain way so this is so this is a new project we've got our new project and then we've got a name right here and actually another thing I want to do is let's set the width on our h2 so we'll go w i d t h w i d t h and we're gonna set our width to about 300 pixels and see how that looks save and now it's all moved back to the side so what we'll do is we will move this to the center so we can go position absolute a b salute and we are going to go right 50%. And now this moves to the right, but it's taken out of the flow of the document. So everything starts to get kind of cattywampus because we said, uh, we said, hey, team, we want to position this absolute. And it's, so it removes it from the flow of the document. And then this paragraph sort of just slips up behind it, team. But what we're going to do, and notice this isn't all the way in the center. I want this to be centered. So what happens is it moved over. So it is to to we want to move it to the center of the screen but the browser is reading this element this h2 element and is saying right move it but put the end of it in the center of the screen and so we want it all the way centered what we can do is we can do a transform translate and we can move that 50 percent so five zero percent and what we're saying is like hey this right here says move this to the right so it is at 50% of whatever the viewport is. So when we resize this screen, our box, our box is going to move. So it's at the, it, it takes up, not takes up, but it is positioned. The end of it is positioned at 50% of the, the width of the, the browser, which in our case is, um, which, which changes as the, as the browser resizes. So I'm going to move this back over here. And by adding this translate, we're saying, hey, move, take this whole thing and then move it over 50% of itself. So instead of putting the end right here, we're going to move it over another 50% of this, the, the width of this element. And that should center it on the page. So if we hit S, cancel, we'll go back over here to Visual Studio Code, hit Control S. Now it moves to the center. And our paragraph is still in the wrong place. It's all, it's all jacked up. So what we're going to do is we're going to move our paragraph down. So if we go down here and we've got our paragraph, we can say position that paragraph. And we're going to put that we're going to position absolute. Absolute. Man, I can't spell. Position absolute, and we're going to say uh, from the top, let's move that down 150 pixels. Save, and that isn't quite enough. Let's move it down uh, 200 pixels. 200, save. And now our paragraph has been moved down. And if we want that to be centered, we can do a text dash align and then center. So now we've got now we've got this super basic page right here. And so what we want to do is when we create our project, we want to have some basic scaffolding here. Now what I'm going to do. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to add a button because we want to we want to put some JavaScript up in here. So down here we'll go B U T T O N tab, and then our button is going to be click me. Woohoo! All right, save. 
and now we've got this button that says click me let's go back over into our CSS and let's go down here we're gonna go button B U T T O N tab uh, not tab but uh our opening and closing brackets and then we're gonna do the same thing position absolute right transform translate control C we'll paste that in here and then we are gonna move this down from the top control C and control V and we're gonna make this like 220 220 save and now our button moves over and it moves down from the top of the screen but not enough not enough position absolute actually if we go back up here we got top position absolute right 50 oh we don't have a semicolon there save and it's still not far enough so let's go 300 so we go 300 save and now our button is here and we can style this button too so we'll go uh, font dash size is equal to let's go uh, 1.5 EMS save that makes that a little bigger and then we can change the color of it so we will go color white this is going to change the text color and then let's change the background background color we're going to make that background color we'll set that to red Save. actually no we don't want it set to red background dash C O L O R we're gonna set this to uh, green so we'll set it to green yellow save oh man what's going on here background color ah let's get rid of this color right there team all right so now we got this green ah that green doesn't look good it looks terrible it looks terrible G R E E N let's use this green save all right that's a little better now what we're going to do is let's add some padding around this button so it looks a, so it looks a little better so we're going to go padding top uh 10 pixels and actually what we can do is we can just do padding and then we're going to say at the top we want 10 pixels and then on the at the top and the bottom we want 10 pixels and on the left and the right let's add 20 pixels save padding oh we need a colon here save and now our button gets a little bigger we can do we can make this all caps so we can do a text dash transform and we'll go uh, uppercase save all right so now we've got this and let's round these borders right so we'll go border none save so we remove the border but now we're going to round it out so we're going to go border dash radius and we will do I think it's 20 pixels to make it rounded like that or we could do if we want to try to make it completely round, we could do 100, but it's going to come out as a, um, not 100 pixels, but 100%. Oh no, that's no good. That's no good. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's go. Let's try 30 pixels. 30 PX save. All right. So that's a, that's a decent looking button. And I want some more space on the left and the right. So instead of 20 pixels, let's make this 40 pixels Four zero save and let's make the background of this button instead of green we're going to make it blue blue b-l-u-e save so now we got this blue button and then let's go uh let's see what else do we want to do i think i want to add a hover effect so we'll add a hover effect so we can go button h-o-v-e-r and we can say we want the background color background b-a-c-k-g-r-o background color to be red r-e-d save and now when we hover over this button it it turns red and we can change the text too so we could say we want the color to be uh blue save so now when we hover here, the background turns red and our text turns blue. Super, super simple stuff. Now what we're going to do is we are going to use JavaScript to, to make something happen when we click this button. So what we'll do now, team, is we'll go over into our JavaScript. And what we're going to do is we're going to get this button. So we're going to do um, document.get element by ID not tag name document dot get element by document dot get element by ID and we're gonna call this uh, button save let's go back here and look at our style real quick all right so button index 
where's our button at document yep document I get element by ID button dot add event listener and then we're gonna go on click and we're gonna run a function we'll we'll just say uh, dark mode and then down here we're gonna make a function function dark mode and that function is going to uh, Set, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna set the page background to we're just gonna make it a different color when the buttons clicked so we're gonna do a document dot body dot style dot background color and we're gonna set that equal to let's see three e three e three e so that's pound three e three e three e and hold on is equal to Oh, we got to put this inside of quotation marks. So save. Hmm. I'm going to get element by the on click dark mode function dark mode. So let's refresh. What? All right. Function <laughs> function dark. So we haven't called. So we call this function, but only when this clicks. So document I get element by the button dot add event listener on click. And then we want to call the function dark mode. All right, so we got it. So right here, we're saying, hey, all right, go out and grab our document and get the element by ID. We're gonna use the ID name, which is button, and button is right here. And so we're gonna add this event listener, and when this click, when this is clicked, we're gonna call this function dark mode, and then it's gonna change the background color. So if we refresh this again and we click this, boom, it goes to dark mode. And we can also change the text to white. So we can do uh, document dot body dot style uh, dot color. And we can make this equal to white. And this will change the text color to white when we click it. All right, team. So now, now that we've got this out of the way and we've seen a little bit, we've seen some HTML, we've seen some CSS, and we've seen some JavaScript. We've got this basic, this basic sort of file, and we know our JavaScript works because when we click this button, it works. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this out, and we're gonna close, we'll save this and we'll close that out. And we'll go back to our command line. And now we have now we have this whole project with index, uh, with the index.html, we got our JavaScript, we'll get all this stuff. So you see, that's a lot of work we had to do just to get everything set up and to make sure everything works the way we want it to work. But we can put this in a script and have that script do the work for us, team. So that's what we're gonna do now. So let's do a dir and see what we got in this folder. So we're gonna we're gonna make a new folder, mkdir. We're gonna call this example project, And we're going to move, so we do a DIR, we're going to move everything into the example project folder. So we can say um, move dash item. I'm going to pipe that to where. So we're saying, hey, we're going to move this item. Hold on, let's see. Move item where name is not like uh, example project move item or name not it ah geez here let's just we'll do this one by one because I can't remember the command right now so we go move item CSS and JS and index and we're gonna move those into the example project folder right so we're saying hey move this move these items CSS comma JS comma index.html um, and actually, let's go, if we go back here, so we'll go JS tab, and then we'll go back here, we'll go CSS tab, and now when we hit enter, all of this stuff is going to move if we do a DIR, now everything's in the example project folder. So right now, let's make a script. So we're going to go new, so we're going to go, we're going to go code, new project dot PS1. 
and this is going to open PowerShell and it's going to open I mean, it's going it's to open Visual Studio Code, but it's going to create this new PowerShell file called New Project. So we we'll just hit Save, and now this file is saved here. So if we do a DIR, we see this new project here. And inside of here, we can just issue commands exactly like we did to PowerShell in order to create a new project. So the first thing we're going to do, right, is in PowerShell, and this applies to all programming languages. You, they, they all have the same construct. So when we think of PowerShell or we think of Bash or any terminal application, they typically come with some sort of scripting language, um, which allows us to manipulate things. And we can manipulate them by just typing them like we did over here, or we can roll these all into a script and put those same commands in the script and have all that stuff done for us automatically, team. So in here, the first thing we want to do, so we're going to going to add a comment. We're going to say this program creates a starter template for a basic web application. All right, and the first thing we want to do is we want to get a project name from the user, from the user. Now, somebody, now what, typically what comments are used for is when, is when we write some code, we put a comment in there to say what the code does in order to tell us, like if we're coming back later on, in or, order to tell another programmer what exactly that block of code does now somebody said i can't remember i heard it but somebody said something very cool i think they said they said comments are not for telling you what the code does they said the code is for telling the computer what the comment is is trying to explain so in this case, right, instead of saying instead of saying this function or this block of code does this thing, we're just saying, hey, get the project from the user. And then we're going to write the code that tells the computer how to do that. So first, let's let let's make this a little bigger so you guys can see. Close this deal down here and uh, we'll spread this out a little bit. All right. So this program creates a starter template for a basic web application, get project name from the user. So in order to do that, we are going to create a variable called project name and we are going to go uh, read. Let me move. Let me move my face so you guys can see a little better and I can make this full screen. So we'll go read. What is that project name? Read host. Yeah, there we go read host and then we're going to do a prompt and we're going to say uh, what's the name of your project and then down here the name of the, yep, you get the name of the project from the user and then down here we are going to make a dir so the next thing we need to do and you don't have to use comments like this i'm just using them for example sake to explain what i'm doing and why i'm doing it so we're gonna so we're going to make a new project folder that's what the script is going to do for us we're going to make the project folder just like we did before so we're going to do an mkdir and then we'll do project name and we add a comma and then we say project name dash css which means make that folder inside of whatever our project name folder is and then we're going to do a project name dash js forward, forward slash js and that's going to make all the directories we need for our for our application now what we're going to do is we're going to add some html because we're going to use that html inside of our template in order to generate just some some basic html starter stuff all right so if we go here we go this is the starter HTML starter HTML and then below that we'll just make a variable called HTML and we'll set that equal to we'll put a couple quotation marks and then let's see let's go back control B let's open this folder let's go up and the sandbox what the heck is going on man
All right. So I believe I believe that I deleted the 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 test folder by mistake. But fortunately, I still have the HTML that we typed out. So we're going to copy this control C and we're going to go here. Control V. And then we're going to get rid of that quote. And what we want to do is we want to use the we want we want to add the project name into our, inside of our HTML. So instead of having just like the straight up title, what we do is we're just going to grab this variable. We're going to put it in here and we're going to concatenate. So we've got this single quote here, there, and we're saying add this variable to that. And then we then we have this other single quote here and let's go down. We've got an error down here. Let's see what this is all about. Go. So we've got single quote, single quote here, and that should end there. Plus plus. And then we got this one here and then down here we've got two. So we got to delete that one right there. And that is going to, this is going to be uh, the markup that's added to our file when it's created. Now down here, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do that for CSS. So we create a variable for CSS and we'll set that equal to single quotes. Well, let's go back. There we go. Well, and then I'm going to grab the CSS and we're just going to copy that control C and grab that CSS and paste that in here. And we don't have to do anything special with the CSS. Now check this out inside of, let's see, is equal to, there we go. And then we'll get rid of this. I don't know why I had uh, the back tick there. So we got CSS. Now we just need JavaScript. So we're going to go dollar sign JS equals, uh, single quotes and then we're going to grab our JS and paste that in there. So we'll go back here. Let me grab that JS right there. Control C and we'll paste that JavaScript right there. And that should, that should do it for that part. And then now we're going to say, boom, here we're going to go add starter content to files. And the first thing we're going to do is going to do an add dash content and we are going to add our project name. And so what we're doing is we're saying, Hey, for project name index for the file index.html, which is in whatever project, whatever we named our project when we're prompted from the, from the, the program, we are going to take that HTML and we're going to put it inside of that file. And then we have these variables. So whatever name that we give up here at the beginning, that name is going to show up here and it's going to show up there. And it's going to be the, the name of our folder as well. The name of our project folder. Now we'll go down and we'll do another add dash content and we'll do project name dash CSS forward slash that's T. I keep saying dash. I'm sorry, guys. These are forward slashes I'm using. This is a dash. That's a dash. This is a forward slash because it leans forward. This is a backslash because it leans back. All right. So we got CSS forward slash style dot CSS. And to that file, we're going to add our CSS. And then here we've got add dash content dollar sign uh, our project name forward slash JS forward slash code dot JS. So we're saying we want to add this JS to our code dot JS file. So we got our JS here, got our CSS here. We got everything that we need, right? So right here, this is where we're adding the content to those files. So we can save here. And then if we go back here and do a DIR, see, there's nothing in this directory. We can type new. So let's say, for instance, we want to build a, a real estate website. We can type new project and so I just type new P and then hit tab hit enter. It's going to ask us for the project name. We could put, uh, I don't know, Sanford and sons real estate. So we got Sanford and sons real estate and let's see DRR. And so now we have this new, uh Oh, what did I do? I type, I type something wrong. So we have this new folder right here, Sanford and Sons Real Estate. So if we type code Sanford and Sons Real Estate, it opens it in Visual Studio Code. And uh, let, where'd it go? There we go. So we will make this window big, Control W to get rid of that opening screen. And then we'll hit go live. And this will open up our browser window with our new file in there. And so we've got Sanford. So we've got 
we've got everything we need. And then what we can do is we can just go back to Visual Studio Code and we can go into our index.html. And anything that we want to change, we can just change or delete. And then we have our style sheet and our CSS. And we can just go in there, delete all this and start from scratch or whatever. So, but this is just to give you an idea of what's possible. Now, let's say you make the same kind of site over and over and over again, right? Or you use like a regular template template file, or we can go out to the internet and we can take, we can take a look around and we can find templates. And also I will be adding some templates to the code 365 startup lab. So when you sign up for a code 365 startup lab membership, which right now for 99 bucks, you get lifetime membership. So anything that I add to the code 365 startup lab or anything new that I do, you will have access to it. And I plan to build this into a huge thing. So now is the time to hop on board team. But I understand if you don't have the 99 bucks, what you can do is you can sign up for the 20 bucks a month. And as new content comes out, you'll still have access to that content. It's just that it's going to cost $20, $20 a month. That's it, team. But every every dollar you give me goes to support me and my family and my little dog and my kids and the YouTube channel and everything, team. And because I, I just I love code so much and I see the future coming and I believe that code is going to transform a lot of people's lives and not just not just in the sense that learning to code is going to help you go out and get a job. Once you learn this stuff and you internalize it and you get good at it, you will be able to build anything you want. You can be on the internet and looking at a website and say, Hey, this is pretty cool, right? You can, and then you can go and you can build it and then you can share with the world and you may get some, you may, you may get some customers. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. And if you share enough, eventually you will get customers, right? And I'm speaking from experience. I've, I've, I've sell stickers online. I sell these hats online. I have these shirts online. They're all over at writecodedrinkcoffee.com. If you want this hat or if you want a right code drink coffee sticker, or if you want a right code drink coffee mug like this, that's all over at writecodedrinkcoffee.com. And those things sell team. I've sold I haven't sold quite as many mugs, but I've sold a bunch of stickers and I've sold a few hats. Um, but again, it all starts slow. And a lot of people, they don't they don't get started because they're afraid. Right. This is too hard to learn. I'm going to have to spend extra time. I'm going to have to do whatever. But here's the deal, team. If you start now and you start building and you share with people and you tell people, hey, this is what I know how to do. Eventually, the customers will start to come and over time you can grow a very small thing into a very big thing. This is how it all starts. Bill Gates started out with Paul Allen and they were in a dorm room and they were like, Hey man, right. And it wasn't even, it wasn't even windows back then when they first started the Altair had just come out and these guys were like, Hey, right. We can write software for this thing. And that's what they decided to do. And as time went on, they were like, yo, school isn't working. We can't do both of these things. So they dropped out of school and they started Microsoft. And we know the story of that. Now we got visual studio code. We got windows, we got Azure, we got all the a multi billion, billion, billion dollar company. And all the companies start that way. Steve jobs, and Steve Wozniak, same thing. And they didn't even, they were working out of Steve Wozniak's apartment, but they would go to Steve Jobs house and work out of the garage to test out all their, their motherboards and stuff. But they started out small. Steve Wozniak was just building these little motherboards in his apartment. And then they built a computer and then they went to the homebrew computer club and other people saw this computer and then people wanted to buy it. And this, this is back in the early days when they were putting these things in wooden boxes. And then at some point, Steve was like, hey, man, like you can really se- we can really sell computers. They got investors and then boom, game. You know, you know the story. Now we have the iPhone. We had the iPod. We had the iMac deal. And Hewlett Packard, the same thing. Dell, same thing. Um, I don't know about Google and YouTube and all this other stuff. Uh, Larry Ellison from Oracle, same thing. John Paul DeJuria from, from Paul Mitchell and Patron. Right. I know you guys have probably heard of Patron Tequila. This guy, right, same thing. He he started out selling, it was like hair care products out of the back of his car. And I mean, he even got completely jacked up one time because they made this order and the order, they made this huge order and the order was all wrong, right? And so they were out of money and they were struggling. And then, you know, and they just kept going and kept pushing. John, John was going from salon to salon, showing off these products that he had once they got the formula right and, and things were right. 
and it's game over, right? It's all she wrote. And millions of people do this all over the world every day. You just start. And there's and there's people out there. They don't have huge, humongous, billion-dollar companies, but there's a lot of people who are running million-dollar businesses writing code, right? They got tons of websites, niche sites on the internet. And I'll, I'll give you guys an example right now. So let's go back. Let's go back over to the, uh, to the desktop real quick. So we're on the desktop and let's go over to Chrome and this guy, what's his name? Do, 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 do. Uh, we go entree entrepreneur on fire. So I think, I think if we go EOP.com, no EOF, EOF.com. No, EO Fire. I'm sorry, guys. There we go. All right, so we go eofire.com. And this, so this, this right here is John Lee Dumas. John Lee Dumas. I started listening to his podcast way back when he first started. Look, this is his August income. He shows income reports for every month. He shows where the money comes from. He shows where the money goes. He shows all this stuff. So we can go back and we can look. This is how much money he's making in a month, right? Just from, just from his podcast. Now, he had to go out and pay somebody to make the website. He pays, he pays people to do all this stuff. But imagine, you could, go build the, you could go build a website just like this on your own. And at the end of the day, you know how to code. And then you can go launch a podcast just like Entrepreneur on Fire. And this is the podcast that got him started that, that, makes, him, that makes him all of this money. All right? He's got other stuff going on right now. But if you go in and you look at his income reports, He's got it broken down, right? Most of his money comes from sponsorships. He's got an online course. He's got some affiliate revenue over here. A lot of money from the affiliate revenues. And then he's got a journal that he actually sells called the, um, I think it's called the Freedom Journal. I actually, I bought it a long time ago. I never used it. I gave it to my wife and I was using the PDF version and then eventually I stopped. But that's not what this is about. This is about your ability to go out and build your own thing. Now, some of you don't want to be on camera or you don't want people to hear your voice. And that's cool. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. You can go out and you can start a blog. I'll show you a blog from, um, if we go over to daringfireball.com. So over here, Daring Fireball, this is John Gruber. And John Gruber, and he came up with this syntax called Markdown. And he was using Markdown because to write HTML is kind of, it's kind of difficult. Like if we go back in here and we look and we look over here, there's a lot of different stuff we got to write. And especially we got to write H1 tags, H2 tags, P tags, all this stuff. You can do this in Markdown uh, and write stuff really quick. And so, so what he did is he came up with a syntax he wanted to use that would generate HTML really fast. And then he wrote a script that would read that syntax and it would spit out HTML. So literally the script, so in Markdown to make a H1, you use, you use a hash symbol like this. And then you'd say what you want to write. Now, this is what this, John came up with this idea. He was like, okay, right? So if I want to make a heading, I just put a hash symbol, I just type what I want. And then he wrote the parser to read this stuff. And it said, hey, if, it's a, if, if, it's, if this line of text, if this line has a hash symbol at the beginning, then what we're going to do is we're going to make that line an H1. And if it has two hashtags, then we'll make it an H2. And if it has six hashtags, we'll make it a paragraph. Or if it has no hashtags at all, we'll make it a paragraph. And so in, in understanding that, you can create almost anything you want. You can make any kind of application you want. And it, it, it's not hard. We just saw how to add content to a file using PowerShell. There's a way there. There's commands inside of PowerShell where you can actually go and you can read content. And th that's super simple, too. Like if we go back over here and just type clear and do D.I.R. Let's say, for instance, let's go into our Sanford and Sons folder. So we're in our Sanford and Sons real estate folder. And we want to see what's in this index.html. We can do a git dash content clip and then hit enter and this hold on oh I forgot to I forgot to enter the file name so we'll do we'll do a clear get dash content ah oh, geez dir all right we'll get the content from index.html so we get dash content index.html and then we'll pipe this to clip, which which means take all of the content from that file and put it on our clipboard. Now what we can do is we can do a start notepad. This is going to open up notepad and check this out. Boom. So if we can do this, 
This means that we can read in this text and we can put it in there where we want. We can write an application that'll get the content, read the content, and then spit out another file team. That is it for this session. If you have any comments, questions, anything, just leave comments below. And if you like this content, subscribe to the channel so you can get more content just like this that is going to help you become the person you want to become so you can do the things you want to do and live the life you want to live. And if you want to, to learn to code, check out the Code 365 Startup Lab where there's some free courses there, but there's also some premium courses coming. Right now I'm working on the HTML section. After that, I'm going to go into CSS and then I'm going to go into JavaScript. And these are all going to be deep dives showing you the most common, the most common uh, uses. So in HTML right now, we're going through the tags and I'm on the div section and I'll be uploading that in a few days. And I'm also working on the absolutely 100 percent free ultimate web dev guide that you can use to put you on your journey. The course is there for people who want to join a community of like minded people who want to go out and, and write code for fun and profit and build their own things and do their own thing and live their own life, do the things they want to do, live the life they want to live and be the people they want to be team. So if you want to join that community and you want to support the channel, support me, my little bitty dog, and my children, I would appreciate it team. But if you can't, no big deal because more content is coming to this channel right here. Thanks for hanging out with me team. I look forward to seeing you in the next session. You dig?